Of course, just, just like human beings, they're stupid fish and they're smart fish, so you catch all the stupid fish on the thick line. Smart fish and the stupid fish probably still taste the same, still taste good. But like I said, yeah, so I've watched this long enough, I'm going to have to go fishing tonight and go down to the harbor, do some fishing. This guy's got himself a legit cane pole, very accurate for the time. Uh, he's going after chain pickerel, which are a little teeny version of the pike and musky. Chain pickerel are very fierce and feisty little fish, much a predator. They like to go after smaller game, smaller fish, so uh, he's probably using minnows. It could use worms, but anything that looks like an injured minnow. Well, I damn well got you. I was going after bullhead catfish. A lot of fun to go after bullheads, feisty little things, good eating. They make great bait for bigger catfish. And you can catch bullheads on anything. They love the stinkier, the better. They love worms, they love cheese, soap. I've caught them on everything, you can imagine. Now we're going for perch. As soon as this is yellow perch, there's a lot of fish that are in the perch family, but I love yellow perch. And that's what it looks like it is. Uh, we catch a lot of those in Chicago here, so fierce little Eating, they just love to go after anything. I usually use uh, smaller minnows, worms, uh, different types of lures. They just are great. Bluegill are my all-time favorite. They are the par freshwater piranhas. They love going after. Very aggressive. You can catch bluegill on anything. I mean, they go for worms. To I've had them hit on bass-sized lures. That is a big bluegill. Uh, that'd be a tasty meal. Pan fry those things up. But uh, they're very aggressive. Rock bass as well. Uh, rock bass are like a bluegill but with a bigger mouth which means they love to eat almost anything you put in front of them you can catch a lot of these fish on they're so aggressive because they just have so much fierce competition they're usually in large schools they will go after jigs lures live bait smallmouth bass are the hardest fighting fish i love catching smallmouth bass fierce fierce uh fighting you get into the mess of smallmouth bass your arms are gonna be tired they are fun to catch that is a legendary size smallmouth bass i think that's a world record that guy's holding uh they don't get that huge but they are fun to catch i caught a mess of them last year on a homemade lure that i made myself and man it was a day i will not forget now we're moving into largemouth bass. There's a lot of largemouth bass to catch, and they're a lot of fun. Fierce fighting, very aggressive fish. Catch them again. This guy's catching one that's breaking uh, all world records if we're using any size proportion. They, I think, world records run 22 pounds, and that looks pretty big there. Now, steelhead trout is not only are they fun to catch, but they are super tasty. You catch those in Lake Michigan here. Uh, you catch them on spoons. Catch them on all different types of lures live bait and uh they are line snappers these things will run your line right off the, off the rail so they are fierce fighting and good tasting steelhead are basically a strain of small of uh, rainbow trout and very powerful sockeye salmon i've caught a lot of salmon never any sockeye but uh they are beautiful colored very distinct with their red colors is generally the males in the breeding season they get that funky uh, red with the green head color. I'm trying to attract the ladies. Just an amazing, beautiful fish. I actually hand carved a sockeye salmon one time for a friend as a gift. I would love to try to catch one one day. Now this guy's going for sturgeon, which are like the dinosaurs of fish, freshwater fish. Those things I think are the largest game species in North America. Those things get up just insane size. I mean, I know the poundage, but it's ridiculous how big sturgeon get. You're magnificent. And I've watched guys' line, uh, poles snap right in half when they hook into a giant sturgeon. Uh, they are just an incredible creature. Don't know how they taste. Never had one. Long nose gar. Now, long nose gar are down south, and they are also another dinosaur of the fish world. They've got these big giant scales and these like alligator mouths. They are ferocious. I can't imagine getting bit by one of those things, but uh, I would definitely be hunting with that rifle on my back if I had a gar that big on my line. And a lot of guys go after these fish. I mean, these things are just look like wolves of the fish world. They, again, I've never actually caught one myself. I've seen guys, I've been around guys who've caught them, and most of the time it's for sport. I don't know how good at eating they are, but I guess you're hungry enough, you'll eat it. Now, they've got a 
tiger musky. That is a beautiful fish. I've caught tiger musky before and not that big, but uh, this guy's cane pole's getting the job done. Here, I'm gonna have to go get me a cane pole and see if I can have as much luck as this guy has. He is really tearing it up. And so he's getting all the fish species here. Northern pike, which is a smaller, uh, they don't get as big as the musky, but still a ferocious predator of type fish. They go after other small fish. And uh, generally you want to catch those using large baits, whether it's live or um, artificial baits. These things really just chowing down on other critters. So, oh, big old catfish. Yeah, I love catching me some catfish. Now that looks like a blue cat. Uh, you can tell by the back fin how long it is. Uh, it's either channel cat. Well, I hate saying it's a channel cat, but that tail fin looks a little different. But either way, good fighting fish whether it's a blue or a channel. Cane pole in it. Again, like I said, I'm gonna do my research. I'm gonna see if they had bait casting reels back in the 1870s. They may have, but I've, I've been several times where I've had to use a cane pole in situations where a regular pole is broken and I just had to improvise and catch usually smaller fish. This guy looks like he's catching smallmouth bass, yep. And uh, like I said, smallmouth bass readily available in North America, certain states, and man, you hook into one, they will put up a fight. I, I will clean and cook uh, smallmouth, but uh, throw them back and go over to Hardy's and have a decent meal because they don't make the best source. I'd rather have bluegill or like I said, steelhead. They're identifiable, like I can tell which ones are. They did a really good job. On the cuts that I can see the whole fish, you can tell they did their research on the body types and like even the difference between a uh, small mouth and a, a large mouth. You can tell the colorations are different, proportions are different. So yeah, whoever did this research, their fish really well. And, and probably it's a fisherman, if I'm, I'm gonna be guessing. But like I said, yeah, so I've watched this long enough, I'm gonna have to go fishing tonight and go down the harbor, do some fishing, but. Beautiful view. And it'd be interesting to see, like, you know, with the cane pole, the one of the disadvantages to a cane pole is you, just, you can't cast very far. You can only cast the length of your, your pole. That's why they generally have these super long cane poles is because they get out farther, but you're limited to the, you know, once you have a reel, whether it's a bait caster or a spinning reel, you have a cast a lot farther, have a lot more control. Let's see what this guy's reeling in. Hey, it looks like a bluegill. Bluegill are more round bodied. Uh, pan fish, they call them. They look like a, they fit easily in a pan. Uh, good tasting. The many time where I've caught fish right there and had a skillet going with the, the butter and we just pan fry them right there and sunset and you just cannot beat that. It's quite an experience. It's really interesting to see some of the things through uh, history too, like what type of lures they had. I mean, if you look at a any type of patent for this time period, some of the lures they came up were so crazy. Industrial Revolution, I think it was near the tail end of the Industrial Revolution, but it was uh, some of the odd and crazy lures they came out with. Uh, hot fish, but uh, and of course doesn't beat the hook with uh, uh, some worms on the end. So fish still biting on that all these years later. But uh, yeah, these guys are having quite a ton. Well, the, the outfit I'd be wearing was out fishing, but it is Red Dead Redemption too, so it is appropriate. Oh, that's fun. Got a nice boat there. A V-hole boat. I prefer more of a flat bottom boat. V-holes are good for uh, larger bodies of water. They take waves better. What traditionally is called a John boat is a flatter boat. Better for like ponds. And I like fishing out of, out of a flat boat because you don't have to reach over so far to try to get your fish out of the water. Uh, the V-holes can be a little sometimes unstable. But yeah, I, this can't be, you can't be the scenery. Getting out there, nice clear water. Now the advantage and disadvantage to clear water fishing like this is the fish can see your bait, but they also can see you. So you need to get that. He casts way off in the distance. And uh, there's a term they use in fishing called line shy, where fish, depending on the size of the line you're using, the fishing line, fish uh, start getting wary of that long, uh, thick line that you've got. And of course, just, just like human beings, they're stupid fish and they're smart fish. So you catch all the stupid fish on the thick line. Smart fish and a stupid fish probably still taste the same. Still tastes good. So, and I want to drive out west and go do some fishing. So, I guess this game is doing its job. Yeah, this guy's falling around. That boat would be rocking back and forth quite a bit. Oh, he gets sucked into the water. I just did a flip book, literally about this right here. Me, one time. No, uh, I don't know why this guy still's got his gun on both of his guns on his back with all his bullets. He'd have thought he'd taken that off, but. 
Yeah, it's smarter to row over to your buddy than it is to try to swim fully loaded with guns and ammo and the heavy clothes, but get his buddy into the boat. Hopefully he got the fishing pole. Doesn't look like it. Looked like he lost it. Look like there's a fish rolling around down there with a uh, hundred feet of line and a rod stuck to his face. But bummer for that fish. Yeah, I just did a video or a flipbook where I jump out of a boat after a fish and I get it. But and it's based off a true story. I actually had lost a broke off a fish of my favorite lure and I really was more worried about my favorite lure. So I jumped in after it and I actually caught the catfish and got my lure back. So it was a successful fish. I think I hooked him real. He's got his club out baiting that fish. This guy should have a landing net available. Which, a big old, looks like a musky. Uh, he is going to town on that fish. These guys are clearly cooking, uh, fishing for a meal because they caught one fish. And they, oh lord, they caught themselves a good old sized musky. You gotta know how to prepare these fish. Each fish has their own different uh, types of bone structure. So like well, the, pi the pike and muskie and pickerel, I think it's called Y bones. And if you fillet it out incorrectly, you're gonna get a lot of bones in your meat. But if you're hungry enough, you'll eat them. Oh, I ain't gonna poach from your pond. Well, this guy's gonna have to go home and try off his guns and re-oil them, clean them up. Cause he jumped in the lake. Great, beautiful boat. That's one of the things on my bucket list one day is I'd love to make a wooden boat. Would be a lot of fun. That guy is kicking up quite the wake on his, uh, with his rowing. Beautiful scenery. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff you just can't beat. Sitting on a boat like this out in beautiful country. Buddy up front, a little animated, singing some songs. They were really excited about going fishing. And I usually get pretty excited too. I once got busted driving 75 miles an hour in a 20 mile an hour zone in the state park because I was going fishing and thankfully the warden did not give me a ticket because he knew I was excited about going fishing. This, this is why they invented the trolling motor because we're rolling this far to go fishing. It's quite a workout. Thankfully these guys got a nice buddy who's doing all the rowing. Beautiful scenery with their depictions of the fish. I said it made me want to get up and go do some fishing. If you like gameology, check them out on YouTube. If you want to learn more about me, Tim Spike Davis, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Let's check out the next video.